أعوذ بالله السميع العليم من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم تسليما كثيرا Last time we stopped or we concluded with the verses or the set of verses that describe the consequence of disbelief and denial and disobedience and what Allah Azza wa Jal threatened those who disbelieve or disobey to be punished with. Today we will start with the new set. This new set, Allah Azza wa Jal in it describes the awaiting bliss and reward for those who abide, for those who adhere, for those who believe in what He sent through Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Allah says in verses 31 through 37 of Surah al Naba. إِنَّ لِلْمُتَّقِينَ مَفَازًا حَدَائِقَ وَأَعْنَابًا وَكَوَاعِبَ أَثْرَابًا وَكَأْسًا دِهَاقًا لَا يَسْمَعُونَ فِيهَا لَغْوًا وَلَا كِذَّابًا جَزَاءً ربك عطاء حسابا رب السماوات والأرض وما بينهما الرحمن الرحمن لا يملكون منه خطابا which means indeed for the righteous is attainment of security, success, and reward. Gardens and grapevines, a full-breasted companion of equal ages, and a full cup. No ill speech will they hear therein or any falsehood as reward from your Lord, a generous gift made due by account. From the Lord of the heavens and the earth, and whatever is between them, the most merciful. They possess not from him authority for speech. Allah Azza wa Jal, or the style of the Qur'an, when one reads through it, will see that Allah Azza wa Jal addresses evil and addresses good, mentions falsehood and mentions the truth, mentions the people of hell and mentions the people of paradise. And this is for a wisdom because if there is only one style, one type of speech addressing people, people will feel bored. So to avoid that, the speech of the Qur'an, the style of the Qur'an addressed people in two different ways. Just like in the saying of Allah Azza wa Jal, نَبِّئْ عِبَادِي أَنِّي أَنَا الْغَفُورُ الرَّحِيمُ وَأَنَّ عَذَابِي هُوَ الْعَذَابُ الْأَلِيمُ Inform my slaves. نَبِّئْ عِبَادِي that I am أني أنا الغفور الرحيم that I am the oft-forgiven, the most merciful and then 
وَأَنَّ عَذَابِي And that my punishment هُوَ الْعَذَابُ الْأَلِيمُ is a very painful punishment. So this is the style of the Qur'an. Another reason or wisdom behind that is that people of disbelief or disobedience and remember this verse or these verses or this chapter in general was addressing the disbelievers at the time. To avoid them despairing and losing hope in the mercy of Allah Azza wa Jal, Allah Azza wa Jal is sending a signal that if you repent, if you adhere, if you accept, if you take the message of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and live your lives according to it, then you have a different destiny. You will have a different abode as opposed to the one mentioned in the set of verses prior to this. It is to keep people or to give people hope. And at the same time, the style of the Qur'an mentioning the punishment and the reward, to send the signal for those who are upon obedience that if you do drift, slip away, you can be addressed with the set of verses before that. So to have people live between hope and fear. And like Imam Ahmad rahmatullah alayhi said, a person, a believer, should lead his life, should live his life with these two, hope and fear. Imam Ibn al-Qayyim resembled them to the wings of a bird. He said, these are like the wings of a bird. If, any, if either of them is broken or cut, the bird falls. Imam Ahmad said, if one overcomes the other, the person, the person is leading himself to destruction. Because the one who has fear, overcoming, hope in Allah, he will despair and lose hope and thus give up on work and exerting effort. And the one whose hope is overwhelming will slip and say Allah is forgiven. The first verse Allah Azza wa Jal says, Inna lil muttaqina mafaza. For the righteous is attainment. Attainment of success. Attainment of reward, attainment of rescue from hellfire. But it is for a certain type of people. For, Allah said, lil muttaqin. What is taqwa? There are different definitions given to the word taqwa by different scholars and by different companions. But, I just want to mention one that was given by Ubay ibn Ka'b in a dialogue that took place between him and Umar ibn al-Khattab radiyallahu anhuma. Umar ibn al-Khattab once asked Ubay ibn Ka'b, he said, what is the definition of taqwa? How do you define taqwa? He said, have you ever walked through a path that has a lot of thorns, he said, yes. He said, what did you do? He said, I pulled my garment together, pulled it up, so I can watch where I set my foot in every step I make. And I was very careful not to step on thorns. He said, this is exactly the definition of taqwa. You have to be careful where you set your foot with regards to to what displeases Allah. Because if you set your foot on the wrong spot, you could be landing on a place that displeases Allah and thus be deserving of the punishment. Now, through the course of our lives, we have a lot of these thorns, but they're not in the, in the form or shape Ubay ibn Ka'b was talking about. They are in the form of sins. And when they prick, they don't hurt our feet. 
They hurt our faith. They hurt our hearts. They hurt our chastity. They hurt our morals. Now, let us talk about the second part of the verse, attainment. Attainment is, as we said, either in success, in reward, in rescue from punishment. And the best thing, the best success or attainment is that one is saved and rescued from hellfire. Allah Azza wa Jal says in chapter Ali Imran verse 185 So he who is drawn away from the fire and admitted into paradise has succeeded and attained his desire. So this is the best attainment one can attain. The best success, the best rescue is when someone is saved from the punishment of hell and is admitted by the grace and mercy of Allah into paradise. What is this success, this attainment that's awaiting those muttaqeen, those who live their lives according to piety or adhering to piety. Allah Azza wa Jal has prepared everything that one can think of and more. For example, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, and this is reported by Imam Muslim, narrated by Jabir radiallahu anhu. He said, alayhi salatu wassalam, the inhabitants of paradise will eat and drink, but they will not have to pass excrement to blow their noses or to urinate. Their food will be digested, producing belch with a smell like musk. Let us talk about paradise, which will be the place where we, insha'Allah, be living. What is paradise made of? Abu Huraira radiallahu anhu, and this is reported by Imam Ahmad and Tirmidhi, and Shaykh al-Albani rahmatullah alayhi ruled it to be authentic. He said, we asked the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam about what paradise is made of. He said, one brick is made out of gold, and one brick is made out of silver. And the mud connecting between the bricks is made out of pure musk. He said, its pebbles are made of corandum and pearls. And its soil is pure saffron. Whoever enters paradise will live an eternal or will enjoy an eternal bliss and will never die. Their clothes will never wear out and they will always continue to live in the age of youth. There are narrations that say it's 30 or 33 years of age. People's adornment, people in paradise will wear the finest clothes the finest clothes anyone can wear will be in paradise. Allah Azza wa Jal says in Surah Al Hajj, verse 23, Yuhallawna fiha min asawira min dhahabi wa lu'lu'a wa libasuhum fiha harir. Which means they will be adorned therein with bracelets of gold and pearl, and their garments therein will be silk. In verse 21 of chapter Al-Insan, Allah says, And they will be adorned therein with bracelets of silver. You adhere to what Allah Azza wa Jal commands you to do, 
and refrain from what he tells you to stay away from, you will be rewarded. We men are commanded to refrain from wearing gold, to refrain from wearing silk, as a reward of adhering and submitting to the commandment and instruction of Allah, we will be wearing it, but in the finest shape and quality. What tools would the people of paradise use? The Prophet ﷺ mentioned in the book of Imam Bukhari and narrated by Abu Huraira anhu. He said the people of paradise's Utensils will be of gold and silver. Their combs will be of gold. Their sweat will smell like musk. And in their censers, the aloes wood will be used as fuel. These were some examples describing some of the bliss and pleasure one will see when admitted into paradise. And with this we will conclude this session and resume insha'Allah in the following session. وَآخِرُ دَعْوَانَا أَنِ الْحَمْدُ لِلَّهِ رَبِّ الْعَالَمِينَ